Hey gang, welcome to Time in the Market, the investing channel with a long-term focus. Let's take a look at Paramount. The merger is finally here. Skydance Consortium, a combination of Redbird Capital, Skydance, the Ellison family, is acquiring national amusements. Shreya Redstone is finally stepping away letting Paramount go, and maybe somebody else will do something better with it. Is the merger a good thing for shareholders? There's been some news around a $15 buyout price that they can get, but it's not really as simple as that because this is a complicated deal, and I wanna talk about what it means for investors. So let's talk about the deal itself. So Skydance Consortium essentially is doing this in a three-part process. First, they're acquiring national amusements at a 2.4 billion enterprise value, 1.75 billion equity value. National Amusements owns about 77% of the Class A voting shares, which is important because they gain control of the company, and about 5.5% of the Class B non-voting shares, which is what PARA is. With that control, they are making Paramount acquire Skydance at about a 4.75 billion equity, 4.76 billion enterprise value valuation, and they're doing that by issuing about 330 million shares shares at a $15 cash per share price point. So that's kind of the idea here. This $15 cash per share price point will be important in a second because there's another part of this deal. They have about $6 billion in excess funds here that is being provided by this consortium that they're using for two things. First, $1.5 billion is flowing directly to this new Paramount entity, the Skydance Paramount combination. And it's not going in there for free because that means that another 100 million shares are being issued at that $15 price point to fund that 1.5 billion that Skydance Consortium is investing and in going directly to Skydance Consortium. Uh, and they're using that for debt purposes, general corporate stuff, et cetera. The other 4.5 billion is being used to give class A and class B shareholders an opportunity to cash out. So first, the class A shareholders, the ones that have the voting rights, are going to be offered either $23 per share in cash or 1.53 shares of this new Paramount Class B share. So they're definitely losing those voting rights because Skydance Consortium wants to have 100% of those voting rights and they can either take cash or they can take some shares. Now, the rest of that money, about 4.3 billion or so, is being used to offer Class B shareholders, people who have PARA, either $15 in cash or one new Paramount Class B share worth, in theory, about $15. So that seems great. If the stock is trading at 1118 and I can get 15 bucks, why wouldn't I take that deal? Well, because if you think about the remaining number of shares that aren't owned by NII, National Amusements, it's about 9.5. $5 billion worth of shares that are out there in the public markets. Now, they have $4.3 billion worth of cash to offer at $15 per share. That means that if more than 45% or so people want to elect $15 cash per share, they won't get the full 15 bucks. They'll get some combination of cash and shares dependent on how many people want to take cash. If less than 45% of shareholders elect to take cash, you'll get your full 15 bucks as a shareholder. If more than that will go, as you go further up the spectrum, you'll get less and less cash and more and more shares. And I think if everybody essentially elects to take cash, you'll get something like six to $7 worth of cash and you know a, a half a share of, of of stock or something like that for each share that you own. So I'll talk about that more in a second, but that's kind of the deal and how it's structured. I'll go over it again later. I have a spreadsheet that I'll share with you guys in kind of more detail to show you the amount of dilution, et cetera, but that's kind of the basics of the deal. So what's the idea here? Well, Paramount and, and Skydance are gonna merge. Paramount, great IP, whatever you think about it, might be great, might not, but Skydance kind of brings in some IP. They have an independent film and TV studio that finances, produces, and owns its content. They have a world-class animation studio led by John Lasseter. They have a Skydance sports um, uh, studio that they started recently. They have the games division that Paramount doesn't have, so they bring that together. But when you, when you think about this stuff, what's going to happen? Well, the reality is you can talk about creative, you can talk about improving their technology, et cetera, but it's reorganization and restructuring of the business. You're combining two entities that are separate. They kind of have overlapping stuff. You're gonna have cost savings layoffs, streamlining operation models, unifying technology platforms, organizational realignment, all of that stuff. They're kind of saying, we're gonna have about $2 billion in run 
run rate cost efficiencies. We want half of that by year one. And that includes the half a billion that Paramount already announced after they fired their CEO in terms of cost savings. That is going to come with some expenses too. They expect restructuring and integration costs of about 1.6 billion. But end of day, the idea here is going to be that we are going to be a leaner business as a combined entity we being paramount. Revenue growth is still gonna be relatively slow, one to 2% growth, but OIBDA, operating income before depreciation and amortization is going to grow at a pretty decent clip. Margins are going to improve. Current paramount probably sitting about 9% OIBDA margins up to 13% expected by 2027, according to what they do here. And what they're going to do, focus on free cash flow generation, pay down a lot of their debt and become a leaner, meaner business. Now, the question is always going to be, can they actually achieve this? When you think about what their business is right now, a lot of it is still linear, focused so much on linear. They're losing money on direct to consumer, making money on linear. Linear is being pressured right now in a big way. The advertising business is hurting for all these companies. I own shares of WBD. That stock is down quite a bit, just like Paramount is. And the reason for that is all these ad supported services, streaming services are really increasing the supply of advertising that's out there. Demand remains the same. Pricing is going to come down. That is going to impact our top line, going to impact our bottom line. Can they remedy that some way? They certainly have some ideas here, but are these ideas actually going to work? You think about they're acquiring Skydance at about a 4.75 billion enterprise value. That's about a 10.5x multiple with some run rate efficiencies with cost efficiencies. It's a 14x multiple on an EBITDA basis. Then you think about what's Paramount trading at? Probably 7x. And you think about what's WB trading at? Probably 7x. Are investors overpaying for Skydance with the shares that they are, they're issuing? If you think about the comparison, you know, 10 to 13x versus 7x for some of these other competitors, seems like they may be a little bit then you think about the valuation of new paramount again this is based on the 23 class a price per share 15 dollar price 15 dollar class b price per share not the 11 dollars that it's trading at today getting about an 8x multiple i'll look at that in a second but overall again the idea here is always going to be we're going to cut costs keep revenue the same make more money on the bottom line Risk is going to be, what if revenue starts shrinking? What if cost efficiencies don't materialize? That happens quite often. So again, let's go over the deal again. Again, not investment advice here. Please do your own due diligence. So I'll leave these, um, spread, I'll leave this spreadsheet in the description down below if you want to read through it. But again, this is kind of how it works. Skydance Consortium acquires National Amusements for $1.75 billion, gives them voting rights, buys out the Redstones. They have voting rights, they can do whatever they want. They make Paramount merge with Skydance at that 4.7 equity valuation. For Paramount to afford that, they issue 317 newly issued shares at 15 bucks a pop. So 317 new shares plus the 666 million current shares gets you to almost a billion shares. Then they make a 1.5 billion investment into Paramount in exchange for newly issued shares, again at 15 bucks a pop, pay down debt, recapitalize new Paramount. That brings you to almost 1.1 billion shares after the additional 100 million plus 3 million outstanding RSUs, PSUs, gets you to 1.086 billion shares. So you're going from 666 million shares right now to almost 1.1 billion shares after these investments, these mergers, etc. Then they have that 4.5 billion left. A, they use that to offer class A shareholders 23 bucks per share or 1.53 shares of new Paramount stock. I'm assuming most of them will take 23 bucks leaves you with about 4.3 billion left. So that remaining cash is used to offer $15 cash per share to PAR shareholders. And those non NIA class B shareholders not receiving cash will receive one new Paramount share for the share of PRA they currently own. So essentially nothing will happen if you just say no to the cash, you'll retain PARA, but it will just be this merged entity instead of just Paramount on its own. So basically the 666 million current shares minus the 32 million currently owned by NAI at the $15 per share a pop means there's about 9.5 billion worth of shares outstanding, meaning only about 45% of non-National Amusements Class B shareholders can be redeemed for 15 bucks. The rest would remain in new Paramount stock. On top of that, Skydance Consortium also gets 200 million Class B warrants with a 3050 strike price, which can be redeemed for new Paramount Class B shares when exercised. That's another 200 million in potential dilution in the future, but again, only if the stock price is $30.50. So if it does hit $30.50 and you bought today at 11 bucks, you're probably happy 
even if they're diluting you further at that point. So that's the deal. Let me know down below if you have any questions or if I missed anything, but I think I kind of covered everything. So what does it mean? How does this look from a valuation perspective? Is it worth buying? So again, not investment advice, but as I look at it, as I look at Paramount today, you're kind of looking at OIBDA of about 3 billion or so based on the cost reduction that they have baked in into 2024 of about five, hundred million dollars or something like that about a 7x multiple on an enterprise value basis about a 2.5x multiple on a market cap basis compare that to warner brothers discovery about a 7x multiple on an enterprise value basis maybe slightly lower about a 2.1x multiple on a market cap basis again oibda i'm estimating because warner brothers does it on an ebitda basis then skydance was also ebitda in the presentation Paramount was OIBDA, so it's kind of a mess. Just stick to one thing and use it, but I had to kind of estimate. So forgive me if these numbers are slightly off, but they should be relatively accurate. Then as I look at new Paramount, kind of keeping the same price point, increasing the number of shares. Again, you're going from 666 to 1086 shares. Big dilution, almost 40 percent dilution. Uh, market cap increases, but debt goes down because of the cash infusion, the cash that uh, Skydance says on the books from a valuation perspective, about a 6.8 X multiple at today's price point, kind of in line with Warner Brothers Discovery, slightly better than uh, current uh, Paramount because of the improvement in uh, OIBDA. Uh, and then on a market cap basis, about a 3.5 X multiple. So, you know, quite a bit higher than Paramount, quite a bit higher than WBD. Uh, you know, from this perspective, it seems like it's either slightly overpriced or relatively fair at today's price point. And then as you look at Skydance, the deal they're making there, again, almost an 11x multiple on both enterprise value and market cap. Maybe part of the, the multiple they're giving it is, again, you're bringing a, a production company that has zero debt versus these other companies that have a ton of debt that they're working through. So you got to give it a better multiple. But on an enterprise value basis, on a market cap basis, you know, these certainly, you know, maybe 30% higher than the others. That's up to you to decide whether or not that makes sense. So as an investor in Paramount, or if you're thinking of investing in Paramount, how do you reconcile this deal with the stock price it's trading at? Well, one simple way of looking at it is if less than 45% of the people take the deal, which is very unlikely, given where the stock is trading today, you would get $15 in cash. And that's a 34% return in about a year. The deal won't happen until the latter part of September at the earliest. So you have plenty of time to hold the stock and hope that less than 45% of the people take the $15 in cash. And I don't know when that decision has to be made or what that looks like, but it's probably going to happen sometime in the future. If you think about how the decision is made, it's either $15 in cash or one share of Para. If Para is still trading at 11 bucks, everybody is going to take $15 in cash. You likely won't get your full $15. A couple of things to keep in mind. The deal won't be made until... 2025, the FTC will have to review it. If they come in and say that this deal can't be made, could lead to some downside. Uh, Paramount also has a 45 day go shop window after this deal is made. So they're probably looking at other deals at the moment. If somebody offers a better deal, potentially there's some upside there as well. On the downside front, if for whatever reason, Shea Redstone National Amusements decides to pull out of this deal, they owe Skydance a $400 million breakup fee. I believe though, if they sign a better deal and Skydance doesn't match, I don't think they owe that fee. It's only if Skydance matches and they decide to go with the other suitor anyway that they would. So that's a couple of things to keep in mind as well. So you're probably not just going to get 15 bucks. So what happens if everybody chooses to go with the cash as they probably would right now? If you're making the decision today, again, you can either get 15 bucks or you can get a share of stock worth $11. You take the 15 bucks. So you're basically gonna get the maximum amount of cash you can get if everybody chooses to go with 15 bucks or about you know 4.3 billion worth out of the 9.5 billion in stock that's out there. You'll get about $6.75 in cash and the rest would come in the form of shares. And the shares are always seemingly valued on a $15 basis. So I'm assuming they're gonna to continue to be valued at a $15 basis, no matter what the stock is trading at when the deal is made, which means you'd get about you know, just north of half a share of Paramount, if it continues to trade at 11.18 when the deal is made, you'd essentially get about $6.15 worth of shares at today's prices, or about a 15% bump off of words trading at today, which doesn't seem like a terrible deal to me. But what's interesting about the way that this deal is structured is that if the stock goes lower from where it's trading at today, 
you get less of a return assuming the maximum amount of people take the cash. For example, if the stock is trading at 11.18, the value of your stock is about $6.15 and the overall return is about 15 bucks. But if the stock falls to, you know, let's say 10 bucks because the business isn't doing well, earnings are bad, etc., suddenly your return is only 10%. So you can play around with these numbers if you want, but that's kind of the idea behind this deal. It's a, it's a weirdly structured deal. You are basically, you know, assuming everybody wants to take the cash, you're forced to take shares on a one-on-one -on -one basis off a $15 price point, no matter where the Paramount shares are trading. So the lower they trade, the less those shares are worth since they're on a basis of $15. And it doesn't matter if the shares are trading at 11 bucks or nine bucks or seven bucks. Um, kind of a weird structure, but it is what it is. On the opposite end, if the stock suddenly starts surging, you're more likely to obviously take the shares if it's above 15 bucks, but the value of that one-to-one -one trade is obviously also better. So that, again, assumes that Paramount can recover really quickly and the $11 price point can go up, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, you know, at today's price point, you're sort of looking at about a 15% return, could go higher, could go lower, depending on where the stock trades and depending on how many people actually choose to take the cash and when that deal happens. So a lot of unknowns, that's kind of the issue with this deal and the complexity with this deal. That's yeah, you're potentially gonna get some cash if you want to choose cash, but it all depends on the choices other people made. So it's like this weird simulation that you have to run in your head. It's like, what, what do I think other people are gonna do? And again, at today's price point, everybody's kind of going to, to do this. Like it doesn't make sense to take shares. It just makes shares to take the cash because you're gonna get one share trading at 11 bucks versus $15 in shares. So that's kind of today's return, but tomorrow it could be different. Friday it could be different. A month from now it could be different. So that's kind of the risk you're taking here and the unknowns of a potential new deal, the FTC coming in. Is it really worth taking that risk for a company like Paramount? Do you think they can really turn it around? They can turn the ship around. Can this company, which once generated a couple of billion in free cash flow, get back to generating a couple of billion in free cash flow? Because if you think about it, you know, this is an enterprise value of 22, 23 billion after the merger. If they can start generating two to $3 billion in free cash flow somehow, pay down their debt really quickly, could this thing double, triple? Sure. Do I want to take that risk considering I already own WPD? Probably not. But is it a terrible deal? No, it seems like a decent deal. Um, seems like you at least get some sort of positive return if you're buying today, assuming the stock doesn't just fall off a cliff because if it does, the way it's structured, you could potentially be in the negatives once the stock starts trading in the $8 range, but maybe that doesn't happen. So what do you think? Am I missing something here? Um, are you liking this deal more than I am? Are you loving it? Are you hating it for similar reasons as me, the complexity? Do you get it? Did I explain it properly? Leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, if you think I missed something, please let me know. This is, uh, again, a learning opportunity for all of us. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.